Welcome to another episode of Safina. I am your host, Sebastian Engström, and today David Amir Parson joins us. He is an entrepreneur as well as a creative genius, an explorer of the unknown. He's also a medicine man, so he runs the only Darkness Retreat Center in the Nordics, Glenta. You can find all the information in the show notes, as well as probably the best restaurant, in my opinion, in all of Stockholm, Tribal Stockholm, and Devote Construction. We have a very intriguing conversation about philosophy. One can say the medicinal journey of ayahuasca, as well as some, you can say, how to perceive the effort of work and growth. Does it have to be spiritual or can it just be paying attention to ordinary things, deeds and acts in life? Please enjoy a very fascinating conversation with the man who introduced me to the spiritual community here in Sweden, David Amir Passion. And if you feel like this episode or any other episode has helped you, I kindly ask you, so we can reach more people, help more people, please hit a like, five stars, or leave a review. I kindly thank you. Enjoy. This guy, for me, doesn't represent this kind of work at all. He's a very calm, very nice, very humble guy. But I wouldn't imagine him going to Peru drinking ayahuasca. Right. So he's so I was just like, fuck it. I'm just going to say, yeah, I'm going to go to Peru. I'm going to drink ayahuasca. And he's like, yeah, I've done that. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You must mix it up with something else. Like, yeah. what is ayahuasca? He's like, yeah, it's just like this tea. I just drank it in Amazonas. Like, okay, so so what happened? It's like, yeah. No, I, I wasn't supposed to drink anything. Like, I just I was just going to go there fish because he's a big fisherman. He's a yeah. really good fisherman. So he went there in his teens and he was just going to fish. And he went on this boat going into the Amazonas and the, was going with this fishing guide. It was this couple on the boat that was going to go and do this thing. It was, they said it was ayahuasca and it was going to be this magical experience and everything. And I was really, really like into it. And yeah. we've done all the dieting and it's very, like very serious. And uh, they come to this place and he goes off and uh, on, on his journey fishing in, in the rivers and having a great time and they go do their stuff. And then one night his guide, who is apparently the, the shaman's son, asks him, so this is ceremony tonight, do you, do you want to join? It's like, what is this? It's like, oh, it's no big deal. It's like, it's good for your body. It's good for your mind. And yeah. you might see stuff. It's like, uh, it's no biggie, but it's good for you. Uh, we do it. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll join. And he joins and he's drink this tea and he just goes off on this beautiful journey, <laughs> swimming with dolphins, ah. jumping in the sea, just like being part of everything. Yeah. And he comes out on the other side, like, no problem, talks in the circle. Yeah. It's like, what's your experience? It's, like, it's beautiful, just pure, like my heart was open. It's like ah. nothing more than that. Nothing more than that. <laughs> like pure bliss. And these other guys just like, like rageful like angry it's like we've done all the work we've been really hard like we've done everything they said we should do uh -huh. and we didn't feel anything yeah. it's, like, it's like what i take away is just like maybe it's not you don't it's not what you do like of course when you go into diet do it with respect yeah. try to avoid what you shouldn't do and try to do what you should do but also come in with this curiosity and yeah not not um, have too many expectations did you, would you say that this this man is a very down to earth person yeah. like now seeing like knowing that he's been through that journey uh -huh. i can't like i think he found something and it's brought with him because every time i relate to this guy i feel happy yeah like he's very he's very innocent very nice guy uh -huh. I don't know who it was before or, or how it's come to be that way, but yeah. Yeah. Cause I found, I find that 
Well, it's usually you're served what you need to see. Mm -hmm. And we're all on different paths. And uh, my father, in many ways, is doesn't do spiritual practices, mm. but it can be incredibly connected to mm. what he is doing, mm. the deed that he is doing, the method that he is utilizing, like how it's not about what you do, it's how you do it. Mm. And how he does it is with a lot of presence, a lot of intention. And I feel like that's, there's so many, there's so many different complicated ways we as a society and as a human kind of come up with to reach pure happiness and bliss. But I don't feel like it always takes too much. Like we always look to the external, but if you have, if you find a dedicated path, like stoicism, they speak about. Just like that saying, it's not about what you do, it's how you do it. Mm. And if you just dedicate it to the work, and if you're pure in your intention, if you're pure in your speech, and if you have integrity with it, then everything else, like it's, it's about the, the feeling that you cultivate. Mm. And that's what I see when you're speaking and what I hear when you're speaking to these medicinal journeys is all these feelings, unresolved things from the past, that's what's coming up. But what if you bid on, what if you followed your truth? Not in a spiritual way, not in a organized religious way, but you've always followed what feels right to you. And maybe that is to lay bricks. Hmm. Maybe that is to cook food. But you've done it with such love and intention that that's the majority where you focus on it. Maybe you've laughed. Maybe you've, you've, you've gone on paths You've maybe you've, you've had a lot of alcohol, you party a lot, or you've done things that in society we might look down upon, but it's the, how you did it. It's the feeling that you had when you did it. Mm. And if it's a, if it's a continued cultivated feeling of, I would, I would, I'm going to say positive feelings, but anything that lifts you up, anything that where you ha your heart is open, what if you cultivate that in multiple different ways? Mm. Then who's to say you need to meditate and you need to eat in a certain way? Because so much about you know, what this recommendation is, is that in this ayahuasca journey that, that my wife and I are about to jump in or go into is how do you cook the food? Because the energetic state that you're in, when you cook the food, will mm. transfer into the food. And that's such a big realization that I've come to lately is, is how do I do something like with the cooking the food especially is I can cook the same amount of food, but it turns out differently depending on how I'm cooking and like what state I'm in. It could be exactly the same meal, but mm. what energetic state am I in when I'm cooking it? And it's, it can be transferred over into sports. For example, to I watched um, the movie Hustle with I just love Adam Sandler. He's a mm -hmm. phenomenal guy. Uh, and and uh, I grew up playing basketball. I have a lot of love for the game, but it just, this applies to any sport. You could play... And have the same, it feels like you have the same type of output in a game. You're doing everything you're supposed to. But where, where is your emotional state? Like, is there passion? Like, is there clarity? Like, what has happened before? Is there symbiosis with all the other players? Like, what have you done to, to come together cohesively? Like what type of flow state are you in? And it's those things, it's everything is just methodologies that we cultivate in order to get to these different states. And the ayahuasca is one, we did MDMA and that's another thing. And that's, that's what I, I realized. <clears throat> Everyone has been telling me about all these different psychedelics and I should be doing this. And this is partly how we met, um, is in a circle and it's, it's in fit for service led by Aubrey Marcus and a bunch of other beautiful people where you're, where you're truly, it's a heart opening place where we're all coming together. And for the first time, I didn't feel judged ever mm. in my life. I truly felt forgiveness like I've never felt before, love like I never felt before. And that has helped me and started to cultivate that type of love. But the biggest thing with that is I'm, I'm realizing like these are states that I've experienced slightly like inflow, like when I'm playing basketball or when going water skiing or when skiing or snowboarding, 
diving off a cliff. Being out in nature, like these are type of states that I've experienced. How do you cultivate these type of states? And when I went into the MDMA ceremony, I didn't really know what to expect. I've had one experience before with ayahuasca and it wasn't the purest. And when I did the MDMA ceremony, it was so much being in a present space and I love holding space. But this type of space I've experienced before. So it wasn't that new to me. It was, an, it was a longer lasting, it was deeper. But this is like when there's dawn, when there's dusk. I've experienced this. I don't know what type of connection there is. Mm. There's, there's a reason why animals are out in that time as well, out in the open, because there is a connection to something higher. So that type of state, that's how I see how do we reach and cultivate that state more often? Because as you, as did I, always seek, especially in my later teenage years and 20s, external validation for my internal happiness hmm. or self-worth when later now I'm reverting back to almost trying to abolish everything that I did and I stopped I shifted my entire workout routine I quit my corporate job took away all of that to think that I would find happiness in just finding or just doing what makes me lose track of time and space but that was not it hmm. It's amazing to have that cultivated, but what if we can cultivate that space on a daily basis? Because the problem was I wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got still, you. He's still <laughs> can operate and function in this world. And that's, I feel like at times, and we both have friends like this that get stuck in that state when you just want to be in bliss and then you responsibilities go out the window. And mm. I'm still a father. I'm still a husband. I'm still used to be the person who, who supported our family in that way. And that was all thrown out the door. So there are still these human aspects of security and of, of deep, uh, of showing up every single day and doing the things that you damn sure don't want to do, mm. but you know, it's going to help you. It's cultivating that discipline. Uh, even like the Jocko the willing quote of, of discipline equals freedom is cultivating that discipline to do the things that are hard. If David Goggins says that, like do one hard thing a day make and practice those things that you know will yield the results that mm. you want to. And this, this is what I'm finding. It's this beautiful symbiosis. All of this, what I'm trying to tie into is that one does not have to be this pure being on this pure path. It's about how you go about your life, how and what states you feel. Because I have a damn hard time feeling love like you did. And, and I still need to work and I still work on it to feel my feelings and to connect because I go into this state of get shit done and nothing else matters. And I like force blinders up and I just, I'm a racehorse and I just go, 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 go. Mm. And then emotions, relationships go out the door, but there's this. And then we wake up like day after, two days after, a yeah. week after. Right. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Sure. Um, so with the medicine. With the meditation, with the breath work, with the cold baths, all of that, it all leads to the same place, in my opinion. But the, uh, the medicine are beautiful. Psychedelics are beautiful accelerators, like done in a loving, space-holding, intentional way with amazing practitioners. Yeah. This is a bit of a tangent of what all now what comes up for you when i speak so many stuff came up i didn't just didn't want to interrupt you oh, but yeah. it's like i and i kept losing them all the way yeah. but it's, it's beautiful anyway like what comes up for me it's like when we do all of this different stuff for me it's been a process of just getting out of my mind and that's what i was like just taking the elevator and just go back down to the heart and it's so close but it's so far yeah. it's a long journey yeah. and it's like this pendulum for me like i get to be in my heart and then i swing out of it and how fast can i realize i'm out of it and when i realize then i can start a journey to come back right. through our, all our practices like meditation or breath work or whatever but if i'm not even aware of this state of not being in my mind and being in my heart then I get lost mm -hmm. in being in my mind. Sure. 
And and that's where I, you can be your whole life there yeah. without realizing. And then just being kind with myself every time I realize thing, because I'm going to end up in that, say, like in the mind space my whole life. Mm. Like I'm not only going to be here, but I used to be very angry with myself when I went into the mind space mm. and reprimand myself like, fuck you, you, you messed it up again. Yeah. Now go back to the heart. Oh. Bad boy. <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It's like. Okay. Oh shit. I messed it up. Okay. It's okay. Let's go back here. It's much more cozy here. And then I'm back without, without being angry. It's like parenting myself. Mm. Well, you're bringing up inner child work now. Parenting inner child. Inner child. What is that like for you? What, what, what are, where are you on that journey of inner child work? It's like, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of 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 having the possibility to be both the father and the son mm -hmm. like i i can't step into holding space for myself and i can allow myself to be vulnerable uh, where before i wouldn't allow that like one of the parts to exist at all mm -hmm. but i'm like for me it's um it's exciting it's exciting to, to stumble upon something I haven't seen before or having my partner bring something up that would trigger a reaction and then realize, oh shit, I wonder who I am if I, like, how can my nervous system feel if I resolve this mm -hmm. or if I integrate this? So my, my journey, who is, who, who am I without my fears? Who am I in my parasympathetic nervous system? Like rest and digest. I don't know. Like I, I'm starting to realize who I am. Yeah. But before I didn't, I was always jacked up on all these uh, inner adrenaline and and different energies that was just driving me forward. Yeah. Without my fears. Mm. Excellent journal prompt to. Yeah, I think repeatedly one can ask yourself that. And that brings up a topic they don't get to, oh, but please hold on that. Because one can use it. I'll go into it a little bit so we, we get a cliff holder or cliff hanger. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger, yes. Is <clears throat> urgency is something that's sometimes a very Beneficial. Actually, I'll go into this right now. And in sales, especially that I'm in, I have a tendency, oh, well, I just want to be and go with the flow. But still that stress, mm. still that pressure of getting things done in a certain amount of time helps us create and do things that we never imagined or thought were possible before. And that's what's happening right now. Like everyone is going on summer vacations and I'm like, oh can relax more, but that's also what is a golden opportunity to get creative and talk to people who might still be working or how can we can come up with creative ideas. Uh, there's an interesting part with fear because we can't escape fear. I think what's coming to me is how do we, how do you utilize fear as a tool and to drive us? Mm -hmm. Like asked this hurt that I felt like I was abandoned or never good enough for my father. I still have it. I'm still grateful, but now I'm turning into gratitude and because I now feel like it's, it's giving me this edge to tap into something, a productive mode that I never imagined possible before because of, I need to prove myself mm. through my actions or through my work that I'm worthy. That is one thought. The other thought, tying it back to inner child work, shout out to Christine Hassan and Stefano Sifandos here, is when I heard them first speak about, heard about inner child work before, and them started talking, this webinar about, well, when my, this big man, Stefano's one, two meters, six, uh, three, four feet tall, and 
built guy talk about when my little boy, when you do this, my little boy gets scared. Or when his wife, Christine Hassler says, oh, well, your little boy gets scared. Or that's what my little girl just wants to scream or shout or so forth. This is childish. <laughs> like mm-hmm. even going into this, like you're grown, grown man and a grown woman in very powerful, uh, inspirational positions. And you're talking about your little children interacting. What's up with this? I almost felt it was silly to a degree. And now, but it also opened a door because anything that we do, we open a door for others now to experience. Um, and I heard another man at my let go into this. And, this 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 masculine part of me or unhealthy masculine like all oh, like shun this away push this away like i don't need that but then i'm realizing it's opening the door for me like now i feel like my little boy my little sebastian is coming out I'm like i see him right here when i can ask him anything and i see what would his response be and it's the surreal experience of knowing like right away like this this is how he feels about the situation hmm. like when you're saying stepping away from your heart this is now another aspect, like how, because that is part of my past, my emotional, the emotions that I experience and still what I carry with me. And how do I, how do I heal that from my nervous system, from my, my soul, my heart and how, because that is going to help me come back to my heart. Because the longest time and still that came up in a session recently is I don't trust myself. My little boy does not trust me because I will always choose productivity over, oh shit, love. Mm. Or to admit that because it still comes up. It's not always the case. But many times I try to almost like weasel my way into it. And there's symbiosis here. And there's more symbiosis than there ever has been before. When I have my heart open in the work that I do. In showing up in my relationship with my wife and my daughter. But it's the state, how like the best deals that I've ever made in sales has been when I've had a genuine connection with the other person. Mm. And still there's this ego that's coming saying, well, you need to do it in a different way. You need to produce, produce, produce. But there's this beautiful symbiosis with putting in the reps, but with an open heart. Mm. Showing up and doing the work and then seeing what happens. Yeah. yeah. It's a fine balance, right? Uh, I love I love fit for service. Like, because Aubrey stands for, or it tries to push the bodhisattva, right? Be part of this world and not just go and exclude ourselves and, and meditate and, and just be, get enlightened by ourselves, but just what can we do yeah. in community and how can we be a shining light in community. Yep. So <laughs> it's there. I, I, I want to be a, I don't want to be enlightened. I want to be light mm. in light. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So just, just, just shine. And then if somebody resonates with that, that's beautiful. What are practice that you practices that you utilize today to cultivate that like for me to stay on my path yeah i need to have my morning ritual mm-hmm. like i have to to meditate and journal that's my my go to yeah and they help me get into this beautiful like like life will go up and down of course but when i do it i open up sure and i feel like everything is okay yeah everything is okay and it tends to fall out okay. But when I stop the practices, there'll be a delay. Like everything will be okay for a while. And then I will get out of tune with myself. And then it will start to get downhill. And then I don't have my practices. And I will jump back into the practices. Yes. But it will take a time until they come back on. So for me, it's just staying on the path, doing what I need, I know is good for me. Mm. And also when I do it, like this, this, this hour in the morning, like it's, it's pure bliss for me. Like mm. it's when I can be there with myself. What is your meditation 
practice look like? What do you do? So, so I've been working with a couple of different um, practices, but what I do now is is just fifteen minutes uh, working with uh, breathing in, I bring it out, I am here now in this. Mm. So I just focus on it's like a mantra, yeah, for myself. And just anchoring myself back into the body, back mm. into this place, and not drifting away, drifting away. Mm. Other times it's just pure non mind, just focusing on my breath and mm. going back. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's always been very mindy. It's just coming back into my breath. Sure. So, so for my what I what I focus on in working with myself now is is more and more tapping into my feelings tapping into my body's resonance. Like, how do I feel about this? Not trying to make, make a mental understanding about how I feel yeah. and what that means, yeah. but basically just what does it feel like? Mm-hmm. Good or bad, yes or no? Sure. And just when did I feel like this before? Yeah. And that way going back into core memories and integrating stuff that I couldn't integrate mm-hmm. earlier. How about your journal practice? What do you yeah. journal about? Just free flow? So I, I'm, I have like different parts. The first one is I just free flow for three pages. Mm-hmm. And the first page usually ends up being just vomiting stuff I'm holding in my head. Yeah. Like I'm angry about this. And then the second page is mainly just like, it just ends up being more structured and more questions like, what is this? Why is this like this? And then the third page ends up being me or source or whatever, answering my questions. Mm. So I get this one, two, three, and then, so I really see like my lower self, my middle self, my higher wow. self. Yeah. Um, and then in the end, in the back of my journal, I have 10, um, mm. 10 points that haven't happened, but I just phrased them as they already have happened. Yeah. And I, I let myself feel them and I let myself think of who I would call when they happen. And what are some of those things? It's, it's one of them is just like, I have a very beautiful relationship with my father mm. because I don't have that, mm. but I want to have that. Mm. So I just keep bringing that into existence. Mm. Mm. And sometimes I've stopped that part because that's in the end of my journal. And then I might take a new journal mm. and I don't bring that in straight. Yeah. And I went back to an old journal and I was like, oh shit. Every one of this has actually filled mm. out. Mm. It's like, you, I don't see it when I do it mm-hmm. because it's, it's a slow process. Yeah. But if I look back, it's like everything I wished for has just come true. Mm. It's, it's a beautiful, I just pick up different, uh, different stuff on, yeah. on the path. Yeah. What else is important to you in the day? Practices. Mm. like creativity for me for me a source to to getting back into contact is to be an outlet of creativity so i still work in construction Mm -hmm. but instead of building bridges and roads and big scale construction and being part of somebody else's machinery yeah i i I build and I want to create something. So what I like to do is to get an apartment that is as, as rundown as possible yeah. and then paint my painting there. Hmm. On the walls? No, not literally. Oh, okay. But yeah. I, I do the too. new floor a, plan. Yeah. I do like all the, um, uh, all the surface material. Yeah. Like I get to visualize how I would love it to be. And it's a very creative process yeah. and not doing it, how would a market like it to be so I could maximize the revenue or the outcome, Yeah. but how would I like it to be? And when I do it, how I like it to be, it tends to end up very good. Yeah. So, so trusting, like, because usually I would go like, what do you think about this to somebody yeah. else? And they're like, no, the market wouldn't like that. Right. It's like, okay. And then I would shy back and I would do it just plain. Yeah. Then like doing it the way I like it. And, sure. And it ends up nice. Amazing. Yeah. yeah I, 
so so resonate with that and that's um what happened with this podcast too in all honesty i was uh very very tapped in and in touch with the what the hell, 15 or more so i need some thing podcast episodes and then i started going into a path of what is it that i can do for my path to actually start creating revenue and that's been the path for the last two years and not just connect to source eventually that would have paid off and i wish i would have done that now in hindsight it's just go all in on the podcast because that was my main calling do the podcast connect with the people ask the questions go mm. deep and answers will reveal themselves but then when back into my mind where will the money come from how am i going to do this I wanted to create a mastermind for high performers as well. Like, and then getting into the creative process of creating a website. And that wasn't a creative outlet for me, for myself. And now looking back at it, the whole year that I took off was just a sabbatical creative journey mm. that has helped me tap into what I love to do and to cultivate that now into the work that I do in sales as well. And realizing there's how much there are certain aspects that I still love to do. And I still cult cultivate. In sales. Yeah, yeah, the connection with people and there's always creativity that one can create in anything that you do. It's just, um, I just like to have the uh, autonomy to do it and I do For it sure. right now. But so, I don't want to come off as saying that you should just, because it's this uh, like in, in spiritual communities or so, you just, just follow your heart and everything yeah. to be lovey-dovey and, and free-flowing. Right. You'll have everything you need. Yes, but also, as you say, you need to work. Yep. So you, you shouldn't be just, oh, I quit my job. I, I, I'm just going to follow my heart and everything will be there. Just be realistic, yep. but also have a dream and work towards yep. that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I myself, I'm not only doing those projects that I love. I'm also doing other projects for other people mm. because that's, that's a source of, of safety, but I'm trying my best to give place for what I, what I love to do. Yeah. Uh, and it's one too many of those jobs that I don't like. And I'm, my mind gets completely clouded mm -hmm. and I tend to get into more and more of a slightly depression. And mm -hmm. then I see, oh shit, I take on too much job. I need to scale this down. So it's for me, it's this, it's like, it's this sharp, sharp, uh, racer edge to walk. Yeah, constantly yeah. reminding myself. But, sure. Yeah. But yeah, slowly, slowly. It's like this. Uh, Aubrey used to talk about like this uh, archetypal the prostitute, right? Mm. To we can't just. Sometimes we need to do something we don't want to do mm. for a while mm -hmm. until yeah. we can do what we want to do, mm. but not get stuck into that for the rest of our life. Yeah. But we might not be in the pos position right now to just root up everything. So, um, for me, I tend to go fast in the direction. Like I like sure. the high energy being on calls with a lot of people taking decisions, yeah. project managing. Yeah. Uh, but when, then when I realize it's too fast, what I tend to do is just slam the brake and turn into another direction. I can't do any of this, Yeah. but that's not good for my nervous system. Sure. What I can do is just, uh, just slowly lift the foot from the gas a little bit, mm -hmm. keep going, and then get a little bit pressure off. And then everything's back to how I want it to be. Sure. And then I can start to take direction because all this back and forth between different, that's also stressful for, at least for me. Sure. If you were to think about... something you would want to leave with the listeners, what would that be? Mm -hmm. So I had this, I don't know if this, this is a good thing. I had this beautiful day last Saturday. Mm -hmm. We were out in nature, me and some friends, and I just got to tap back into this boyish energy, mm -hmm. just running around picking a smultron. It's, it's like wild, small, wild small st strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this amazing. Yeah. It's like I guess back tap into that, right? Just putting the little straws, just just being childish, yeah. and that just just open up that childish, playful. It's yeah. just come back to play. 
Uh, take this this stick out of a butt. Trying to do this <laughs> really serious robotic yeah. stuff. Like we don't know shit. Yeah. No, nobody of us knows how to do this. Mm-hmm. Like we're just children getting older. Yeah. And then somewhere along the line, we're supposed to be serious. Sure. It's okay. Yeah. You can be that too. Yeah. Also childish. Yeah. yeah. Playful. Childlike one. <laughs> and how will that start making a difference? If you do cultivate that, because I find myself <clears throat> and other people I know would have a responsible, I don't have time for that. Mm. Well, that's a, I'm busy. Like, mm. why would I do that? It's like, um, I don't have time to meditate. It's also okay. It's, I can't say it's good for you. Yeah. But, um, if you don't have time for it. Yeah. I'm sorry for you. It's, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's a stressful place to be mm. when, when it's too much, but you can also be, you don't have to stop what you're doing to be playful. Sure. You don't have to stop what you're doing to be in a mindful space. Yeah. It's just to, to, to take the chip out of one side and put it into the other and continue doing what we do, but with an, a little bit of another, um, side of you. Mm-hmm looking at it when i hear you say that i have this tendency of taking my work whatever projects into my time especially with my daughter and it's become this well she is a child so my mind is preoccupied Mm. but how do i cultivate that childish just love not childish but childlike love and innocence within me because I don't need to be thinking about that. It doesn't help me when I think about that, but my mind, a part of me thinks that, well, I'll help process, I'll help come to conclusions. Usually it's the opposite. It's when I do come back to that childlike play state is when creative solutions appear. Mm. It's when I am tapped into this loving state and that helps other people recognize that and connect to me. And therefore amazing things happen in work as mm. well instead of being stuck in the mind like oh i'm gonna do it like this because everyone else does it like this and this is what it's required in order to get this type of result yeah yes and let go yeah because i i think when we do exactly what we know we, we we should do yeah you'll get a result yes you'll get the result that you've calculated yes but but if you do the stuff like i come up i show up that's my job. I yep. show up and I do the work and then I, I step back and I see what comes out because the most beautiful stuff in my life has not been the thing that I've, I've forced or created. Right. It's when I took a step back and life happened Yeah. and I, w- I would never be able to like mentally visual, like come up with that. Sure. It just comes up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not shy away from doing the work either. Like <laughs> be there. Yeah, <laughs> it's those both. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been special. Mm. So thank you, thank you, thank you for um, coming out on this beautiful day mm. and uh, telling your story, telling what your truth is and the path that you're on. Mm. It helps spark beautiful things within me. And I very much see myself in you in so many ways. And likewise, the, and the further and the more I feel like the work that I'm doing, the more there's this deep empathy and deep compassion and just love for, for another human being. And as we started this process, it feels like that's what we call in. How do we feel the love for ourselves, but also for others? And how do we realize we're all one? By you doing the work, it helps me do the work and vice versa. So thank you for thank doing you. the work. Thank you. Thank you, David. Mm-hmm. To be continued. Huh? Yes. David and his curiosity for life, for new experiences, to devote himself to something greater and following that inner guidance is something else. He humbles me, yet he makes me eager to pursue a path that is unexplored. 
especially here in the Nordics and in Sweden. He's truly a leader, even though at times even he doubts himself. So may this be a blessing to you, an inspiration to you, as it has been to me. You can find David, everything that he's up to in the show notes. And I simply wish you a wonderful and amazing connected day. Much love. Peace.